Next, I'm going to talk about what brushless motors to choose for your 5-inch quadcopter. Some people call them AC brushless motors because an electronic speed controller converts DC or direct current into a waveform. However, their official name is a brushless DC motor or BLDC for short. You will need to buy four of them and it's sometimes a good idea to buy a fifth one as a spare. It's an easy choice these days, especially when building your first model. You really want to go for the cheapest ones possible and it used to be the case that cheap motors weren't any good. But I'd go as far to say that my favourite motors these days are now budget motors and they are the iFlight Zing E series or the Emacs Eco 2s costing around $11 a motor. And apart from them having economy as part of the name, they are as good a quality as ones that can cost up to $27 a motor. They both feature things that budget motors used to never have, such as a hollow hub, which saves weight, and they are more robust than a solid hub as well. They both have a hex screw to stop the bell from escaping from the magnets rather than a C-clip, which means it's easy to clean mud out of the magnets. I will say that the hex screw on the Eco2 motors is in very tight, so you have to make sure that you have a really good quality 1.5mm hex driver in order to get the screw out, otherwise you could end up damaging the head. The Zing E motors do come loose easier if you are trying to decide between the two. For this build, I'm going to be using the Emacs Eco2 motors, but you can't go wrong with either of those brands. As for the size and KV of the motors, for freestyle, you want the 2306-1700KV for a 6S build, which this is going to be, or 2450KV for a 4S build. But I'd recommend going straight for a 6S build these days. And for a race quad, you want a 2207 motor with a KV ranging from from 1700 kV to 1900 kV for a 6S or 2450 kV to 2750 kV for 4S but again I would recommend going for a 6S build. The higher the KV you buy, the more RPM the motor will have. However, both 1900 KV for 6S and 2750 KV for 4S will be seriously stressing your battery out, so I wouldn't recommend a high KV for a first build. High RPMs doesn't always convert into high thrust either, it depends on the prop that you choose. You can pretty much ignore any larger stator motor than that for a 5 inch model. In fact it's my opinion that 2306 and 2207 motors make the battery voltage sag far too much as it is. I can see us going back to smaller stator and lower KV motors in the near future. You can expect a 4 minute flight time with those sized motors. I'd personally stay away from 2208 stators and also 2407 or 2406 motors as they are just too current hungry for your battery. And sure, you can go for an even smaller motor like a 2206 or 2205, but if you want to keep up with beta flight developments and things like that, then 2306 and 2306.5 or 2207 is the standard at the moment. The stator of a brushless motor is often confused with the bell of the motor, but that's not the case. The bell of a motor is often overlooked, but they also vary in size to the point where motors can look bigger or be heavier than other brands, even though the stator size is the same. A brushless motor just means that there is no contact between the moving parts of the motor, meaning that they hardly ever wear out. You will see brushed motors in the hobby on small toys, but they aren't used with bigger models. The bell stays in place on this motor with a hex screw from the underneath and if you undo that then the magnets around the bell still keep the motor in place because they are strong but if you pull hard enough then the bell will come off the stator. The stator is the hidden part underneath the bell that the windings wrap around. With quadcopters we use outrunner brushless motors which means the entire bell spins around the stator. 
Magnets are placed on the outside of the bell, which then interacts with the electromagnets on the stator. It's a common misconception that notchy motors are good quality because they've got strong magnets, but that's not always the case. Notchy motors are usually caused by there being a big enough gap between the magnets that a notch is felt when the bell turns. This can sometimes cause a motor to stop. So a good quality motor will have its magnets placed close together for a seamless transition. You will sometimes see some material around the bell of the motor between the magnets and this has been used to balance the bell so that when it's running at high RPM we don't get any vibrations and more often than not when you see this material it means that it's a good quality motor it's either that or balanced perfectly which is never the case so if you don't see this material on a motor then it's more than likely not a very good quality motor because they haven't gone to the extra length of balancing it Something that can determine the quality of a motor are its bearings, which used to wear out on budget motors, but that's not really the case anymore either. It's just something to watch out for. You will hear a motor sounding noisy when it spins rather than being smooth. The stators are listed as two measurements in millimetres. The first one is the diameter and the second is the height. So a 2306 motor is 23 millimetres in diameter and 6 millimetres in height. So going back to my choice of stator for a freestyle model, I find that a 23 millimetre diameter stator gives a smoother response than 22 millimetres. However, the wider diameter is a bit heavier on current, so the 6 millimetres height compensates for that whereas a 2207 motor is shorter in diameter but taller in height which gives a more twitchy response but more thrust which is better for racing KV is commonly known as the amount of times a motor will turn in one minute when one volt is applied to it. Now, that's not actually accurate, but it's a fudged way of getting us close enough to the figures that we want. So, a 1700 KV motor will spin 1700 times each minute when one volt is applied to it. But we will be applying 25 volts with our 6S battery, meaning that it can spin up to 42,500 times a minute. KV is measured without the load of a propeller or any drag, so the revolutions per minute, also known as the RPM, will vary depending on the size and pitch of propeller that we put onto it. KV is actually the measurement of the back EMF that a motor produces itself. So EMF stands for electromotive force. So if you were to say, turn the hub of a motor with a drill bit, then the motor will create its own voltage as it spins. But it's easier to just say KV is RPM per volt. The KV of a motor is determined by the number of winds of copper around the stator. More winds give a lower KV and less winds give a higher KV. The motors have three wires that connect to an electronic speed controller which magnetizes parts of the stator in sequence which causes the bell to turn. Some motors are labelled clockwise and counterclockwise or CW and CCW for short. You don't really need to worry about that these days. It relates to the nut rather than the motor because all brushless motors can turn in either direction. Some time ago manufacturers tried to come up with a way to stop the nut from flying off by making them directional so that when the prop turns it tightens the nut up. But most of the time they were using a locking nylon nut anyways so that's the piece of material around the top of the nut. So as long as you've got one of those it doesn't really matter which direction motor we have because that is not going to come off. You going to break your propeller before the nut comes off. So all of the motors I'm using in this build will have the locking nut tightening the same way but of course the motors will be turning in different directions. As for what props or what propellers to get for a freestyle model, you want 5040s or 5140s. The 50 stands for 5.0 inches, which is the prop diameter, so 51 is 5.1 inches, which all frames can accommodate for these days.
and 40 relate to the pitch, meaning that in one rotation of itself, the prop should move 4.0 inches forward. Although a lot of the time these days, the pitch number seems to get fudged. But in general, a 40 pitched prop is going to be lower thrust than a higher pitched prop, and it's gonna be good for a beginner. As for the prop brand, everyone has got their own favourite. I personally like the iFlight Nazgul props and the Azure Johnny FPV props for freestyle, and I'll be using the Nazgul props for this build. Racing props generally have more pitch, but if you are starting out, then it's not going to harm you to start with a 50-40 prop either, and then move up to something like a 50-46 or a 50-50 at a later date. Props come as a pack of four because two of them run clockwise and the other two counterclockwise so make sure that you are buying quadcopter propellers and not plane propellers because they might all rotate in the same direction. We use tri-blades rather than bi-blades in general for both racing quadcopters and freestyle quadcopters because they provide a smoother response for the flight controller and they have less vibrations for getting decent video footage. The trade-off being that you get shorter flight times and a slower top speed than bi-blades because they aren't as efficient and they've got more drag.